everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tiffany Benson, one part of Team Benson, and I rarely have city girl moments, but I had one recently when they finally told me what it was that was digging up my garden. Alright guys, so for those of you guys that have been watching my channel regularly, you know that I've had something that has been wreaking habit on my raised beds. Now the pots have been doing okay, granted some of my larger pots have been destroyed too as well, but in the past three days, four days, I have lost my broccoli, my jalapeno peppers, one of my tomato plants, and a handful of bean plants quite annoying. Oh, and my Thai basil and my purple basil. So I've been very annoyed by that. Well, I thought it was a rat and I had put out sticky traps and nothing happened even though I didn't know that I was supposed to bait the sticky trap so I just put it out there and nothing happened. Um, I tried putting up chicken wire, I tried laying down chicken wire, but then I started noticing that it's something that is really digging and tunneling so they can get underneath the chicken wire. Well, I called the exterminator because I got really, really desperate to be like, I just want to know what it is. And we hadn't put out big rat traps because we would like to grow an organic garden here in Arizona. And it is very uh, uncomfortable, basically, to put out a big giant rat trap, have it slam on the rat, and then maybe potentially throw any type of diseases or anything that might be in the rat blood all over our organic garden because we don't have a big space. I have a small space garden back here. So it could potentially put a lot of diseases into our soil and into, into our food. So we were worried about that too as well. So between not wanting to put down any like strong chemicals and pesticides and not wanting to put down rat traps, we have been really at a loss for what to do. Well, I talked to an exterminator and they said it sounds a lot like a vole. What's a vole, you ask? This is a vole. So literally, what the heck, I didn't even know that existed. That was my city girl moment because I went from being like, oh, la 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 la, to what? <laughs> and it was just like that. <laughs> so. <laughs> Now comes the fun part of how do you get rid of voles and are voles going to be dirty little varmints too that might carry diseases? Well, I searched YouTube and I found three different ways and I'm going to do them all. Two of them I've already started doing and I've seen a difference in maybe two of the beds, but the third way is the most extreme way and I'm just going to do that and we're gonna see what happens because I want to have my broccoli and I want to be able to use my big beds and I can't use my big beds where I can grow the majority of my full my food if they keep getting tore up by voles. Now the unfortunate part is that these are organic methods so it is gonna be something that takes a while so what I've decided to do is I've started inside um, brand new broccoli greens cabbage, all those different things. I started them inside and I'm just going to let them grow while I try and take care of this vole situation. So then once the vole situation is gone, then I can put them out because otherwise I'm just going to put them out and they're just going to get eaten. Now the vole hasn't eaten everything in the garden so there's still some stuff growing. Um, like my cantaloupe is still doing good, my shishita peppers are still doing good, all of my tomato plants are still doing good, um, some of my beans, my green beans are still doing good, everything in my pots are good, most of my herb garden is good, and a couple of other things, my eggplants and my trees are good, but my broccoli is gone. I like broccoli and I want to have broccoli come February, March. So. We need to figure out that problem and like I said, I'd rather figure out the problem and grow everything inside and make it nice and healthy so then that way I don't risk it getting eaten out here. So Tiffany, how did you get voles you might ask? I had the same question because I'm in the middle of the city on the base of a mountain. So how did that happen? Don't they dig into the ground? The mountain's pretty much rock or at least that's what I thought. Well. I have a great environment that has nothing but the voles food because I grow an organic garden. 
which means there are tons of earthworms and grubs and just everything down in my soil that the vole is like, this is basically an all you can eat buffet. So you can get rid of them by chemically doing something about it, but then that kills everything that I've worked so hard for in my soil to grow such amazing vegetables. Or you can do these three things that I'm gonna to mention to you and hopefully these work. So I have talked to a lot of farmers and looked at a lot of YouTube videos and I got a lot of good recommendations and this is gonna be my first week trying it to see if all of these recommendations work. I'm gonna do all three at the same time and just see how it goes. So the first thing was is I went onto Amazon and I got these. Now these are solar powered rodent repell repellents. And basically they are solar powered so they have a little solar um, panel on the top of them and they emit a noise that is supposed to detour the rodent from wanting to be wherever it is that that noise is because it's a high-pitched noise. So I turned them all off so that they don't beep every five seconds in this video but I'll flip the camera around and turn it on so that you guys can see what it is. So this is my poor little broccoli bed. As you can see there are tons of holes in here guys and this one I just added two of these which are the solar power thing thank God my tomato plant is still holding up nicely but all the broccoli is gone now all you do is turn it on and see it makes that noise so that noise is supposed to detour all of the rodents now I only had one in this bed and this is the bed that got dug up the most um, but I also had it in this bed as you can see it's right there and this one seems to be doing a lot better granted they did come in and eat my pepper plant but the bed itself doesn't have to, doesn't seem to have that many dig marks in it all right guys I had to have a change of outfit because it got colder in Arizona the temperatures dropped so yay we'll finally after today be in the 80s and the 90s but it got down to like 50 degrees last night so it was cold but it's not cold enough to be outside here with just a sweater on <laughs> sitting out here so the next tip that I found was juicy fruit gum which smells really strong so I've never I don't eat gum I don't chew gum so I never buy any type of gum so but I was really really surprised when every farm farmer said all you do is take juicy fruit gum and break a little piece off of it and put it down into their holes now this method I'm a little saddened by because it does it's supposed to kill the vole or the mole and I really don't want them to like die I just want them not to be back here but I'm pretty desperate so um, so all you do is you're supposed to stick it down there and they're supposed to eat it and because they're attracted to the smell and they're attracted to the taste but they're not going to be able to digest it so then since they can't digest it it's going to basically kill them and since they're underground they're supposed to just stay underground so I guess we can count it as fertilizer maybe Oh, that's gonna be so gross when I go to plant something. So this method I just tried last night. Um, I haven't seen any dead moles or voles. So, and I don't know if it 100% worked because it's not the next day. So the next day probably would be when they died since they ate it last night if they did eat it. And where I planted it, or where I put it, I'm pretty sure it got dug up. I see a little dig marks where I put it in there. So we will see if there's no more dick marks come tomorrow or the following day now the third and final method I actually had some in my house so it's just basically household products and I'm going to do that today so I waited like a day between each one to see if they got better and better and better so the first time with using the solar um, noises it did push them all to the spot that didn't have a lot of the solar noises which was unfortunately my broccoli bed I thought that bed was good so I didn't have one over there I should have had one over there because then bye bye went broccoli but over there looks good <laughs> and the rest of my my plants look pretty good over there but um, the last one is castor oil now I don't know if you guys know this 
but ca finding castor oil in a store is kind of like finding toilet paper back in March. It's like non-existing. I don't know what happened and why there's no castor oil in the store, but there's no castor oil in the store. So I happened to find these last two bottles and I found them in the hair section because I'm actually going to do a video, um, it'll be my medicinal herb video on Friday on what I use castor oil for because I use castor oil for a lot of different things like my hair and stuff like that. Um, so it's used for that, which is where I found it out was the hair aisle. Um, but normally castor oil is a laxative, as you can see it's written on there. And so you're supposed to mix castor oil with the soap, and I have just some dish soap, and some water, and you're supposed to water your garden with that. And what it does is it doesn't kill any of like the worms, or the grubs, or anything that you have in there that you want to be in there, but it coats them with this oil. So then when the vole eats it, it basically gives the vole massive diarrhea. <laughs> and then the vole just leaves because all of the bugs taste gross and it gave them diarrhea. So you're supposed to put it all over the soil so that then the vole doesn't want to dig in there because it gets on their paws and they lick their paws and then they eat the bugs and it's all over the bugs and it's just going to be a massive crappy mess <laughs> apparently. Once again, probably more fertilizer. So I am going to do that today and I'll let you guys watch me while I put that together. Um, I found a couple different recipes. I'm just going to throw it all in there, see what happens. Okay, so all the recipes that I found pretty much said just to use about half and half and then fill the rest up with water. So that is what I'm going to do. I am going to take about, I have two of these bottles um, and half my garden needs water, half of it doesn't because I started watering and then I was like, oh yeah, I need to get the castor oil. So I'm going to do half this bottle for this gallon and then I'll redo it again with another half of the bottle. Pour that in there. You guys might hear Mr. Benson talking. He's inside. So I'm really hoping this guy this works, guys, but it does help finally knowing um, what it is that was in there. Because that was really, really frustrating. Not knowing. So the good part too is that any AFibs are going to die too with the dish soap. And I like to use the Simply Truth um, version of dish soap. So this is a clear, or free and clear, um, no like anything in there, no toxins and it's sulfate free. So then that way it's not putting chemicals into my garden too as well. So now I'm just going to fill this up with water and then I'm going to water the garden. Alright guys. So now my garden is one big giant laxative. <laughs> so I'm really hoping that this helps. Um, and I also want to just give you guys some encouragement to grow an organic garden because it is worth it for your family and knowing what you what what comes out of your garden is healthy for you and that it doesn't have a bunch of different things in it. Like you may not know if you buy in a store, but yes, there is going to be a lot of frustrations with it because when you have something that's healthy and a great ecosystem, it's going to bring in larger prey and larger prey and larger prey. So eventually I'll get a rattlesnake back here and it'll take care of everything and then I'll just have to avoid the rattlesnake because then they bite me. <laughs> but until next time guys, grow yourselves a garden because even a small space can provide you with tons of food. Bye guys.